I'm Jackie Lappin. I'm an expert in helping leaders get books. I've got 35 years in the publicity space doing, and the last 12 doing radio podcast tours. We introduce authors to 9,000 radio shows and podcasts with a minimum guarantee of 30 interviews. And we've been booking speaking engagements. <clears throat> All together over the years, I booked 10,000 interviews and speaking engagements. I know how to get you visibility and on stages. I'm also the author of two best-selling books. The last one where I booked over 100 interviews for that on podcasts. So you know that I've been on both sides of the, fa the fence. And I'm the creator of Speakertunity, the speaker and leader resource company. So sing speaking, as you know, is the single most powerful and effective way to grow your business. You know that this is where you develop that no like, and trust factor that gets people to want more from you. And that is our whole goal in building this program so that you can build those relationships and sell from the stage, build those relationships and get more people into your community so you can grow your business. Speaking is the magic key to attracting a steady flow of clients. And if you do this process, and you can repeat it several times, you will find that things will continue to roll and you will be getting speaking gigs into the fall, all through the next following year. So is there a calendar filled with speaking gigs in your future? Well, you probably have been hoping for that. Let's see how we can get you there. The first thing, are you praying for speaking gigs to come your way? This is not a particularly effective strategy, guys. You know, you can, you can have a great presentation and you can sit there and wish and hope and that people will put you on their stages or you can go out and get those stages. But maybe you're already working at it and you're getting those gigs, but it's really slowly. Well, you know, that's not going to be productive either. There are other ways that make this flow. And maybe you haven't just gotten around to it because you're just too busy. Well, that's usually me there. Uh, but when it comes to speaking, I always make time for it. And then haven't got a clue where to start. Well, maybe we can help you with that today. So no more excuses. We're going to get you out on stages all of it. Over so many people in the PSA. You are fabulous speakers, but who doesn't need more stages? And so I'm going to give you a strategy today that is going to ramp up your speaking opportunities. You know, one of the biggest issues is the fact that po folks just don't actually get to it. So this strategy is going to give you 10 days and 10 activities to do. So <clears throat> let's get started. 10 speaker bookings in 10 days. Day one. So what are we going to do here? You're going to choose and refine your signature speech. And I'm going to tell you that you need to have two additional alternate presentations. If you only have one arrow in your quiver, it had better be a bullseye. If you give people an expert, you know, your booking coordinator's choice, then you are significantly increasing your success rate uh, and, and increasing your odds of getting uh, them to say yes to one of them. And for the purposes of this, we're going to focus on one. But you can come back and do this with the other two as well. So you're going to create a spreadsheet zeroing in on the types of audiences and meeting for each one of these presentations. Now, let's talk, you know, you can you can do that when you're talking about three different presentations, you can talk about three different entirely different presentations on different subjects. You can talk about repurposing the same presentation for different audiences, one for a personal growth audience, one for a business audience, one for some other kind of an audience. So it gives you choice. Um, and of, of different categories, and we're going to show you how to find the speaking gigs for each of those. Um, the next thing is uh, you want to craft your proposal email and allow for the ability to interchange these three different presentations. You'll have a body of an email, and then you'll be able to switch it out for any one of these presentations. Now, most of you already have somewhat of a signature a presentation, but I'm going to briefly go over what, what creates your signature presentation. You build your presentation around what your core audience needs and that pain that they will pay you to solve. If, if, if it's not, it's more of a motivational speaking opportunity. But if you're a business speaker, then you really have to key in on the pain that they are suffering from and how you can resolve it. And that's what's going to get a booker to say yes to you as well. 
You can ascertain how your personal story will illuminate the road to success, your rags to riches story, uh, and how you, uh, you, you learn to do what you're doing that you're now teaching, and you can show them the path to the promised land. Give them a teaser of your expertise, three to five tips, decide what those five, three to five tips will be, and provide a pathway of what's the next step. What kind of a program will you offer that will help them move from, from the tips into the next level that you can provide? So in a, in a nutshell, here is your signature speech roadmap, the basic structure. Start by telling a story or engaging them by asking a question. Hey, are you suffering from, do you need, you know, do you want more of? Offer your credentials. What makes you the expert that you are that they want to listen to you? Define the problem so that they know that you are talking about them and what it is that they're suffering from. Explain what they will learn, just like I did with you on that slide a minute ago. Give them your roadmap to success story. Tell them how you got from there to here and why you can show them that path. <clears throat> Present your tips, the value-based content that they will eat up and know that you have more to offer and that they're going to want more from you. And then ask, is this helpful? And show them there is a way to get more. What are the next steps? Then you want to present your offer. Here's what I have that's going to help you along that next step. And then invite them. I know people hate the word sales. So you're looking in to invite them to invest in their own success with you as their guide. And then you want to tell them how they can enroll. <clears throat> so now you've got your signature speech. Now let's look at how we're going to parcel out what are the different speaking opportunities you're going to go after. Now this is set up for a woman who's um, got a program that reaches both personal growth, that the business segment, <clears throat> and she also wants to reach girls, for example, because it, it inspires them to uh, achieve more. So <clears throat> for the personal growth list, you're going to go look for spiritual centers, women's service groups, health and wellness support groups, health and wellness meetups, church groups, holistic life centers. That's just a sampling. And I'm sure you can come up with lots of others, whatever your personal growth fo focus might be. And then the business focus would be women's business networking meetings, moms professionals, women's faith-based business meetings, women's associations, women's conferences, women's chambers of commerce. And then for the youth focus, she's going to be looking at YWCA's, National Girls Conferences and Girls Club. You get the sense here how you can start planning your different avenues uh, and that where you're going to want to outreach for your three presentations. Okay, so now let's talk about the elements of a, of a powerful proposal letter. So what goes into that proposal letter? Well, why you're the right person to help this audience overcome that problem that they are experiencing. That is the number one um, that you need to establish in that first paragraph or two. And then other supporting information, whether you've authored a book, what your credentials are, what your achievements are, <clears throat> where you've spoken before, all the kinds of things that make that um, show how uh, the expert that you are. Then a possible referral contact in common or a significant testimonial. I love common touch points where they, they recognize the person that you're offering a testimonial for, from or, you, or they would recognize their title. Or they, you can talk about the fact that you're the, you guys are in the same group, you have the same contacts, you, you, you know, you, you are, um, you, you, you've intersected in some other way. You wanted to make point, point of pointing that out because it kind of it shortcuts the how to get to know you, whether they know you, whether they care about you. <clears throat> And then where you might have spoken before, if that is impressive, you don't want to put in things that are less than the kind of group that you're going after. But if you've got uh, places that you've spoken that would be perceived as higher in the food chain of speaking, or at least equal to it. So if you're you want to speak at corporate, then you put in corporate. If you want to speak at uh, um, you know spiritual centers, you put in uh, spiritual centers. If you want to put, you know, speak at business meetings, you put in pro prominent business meetings or conferences. Um, video link, you want to establish your video link in here that's no more than three to five minutes. You don't want something that's going to overwhelm them. 
And then you want to add your speaker one sheet. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Um, it's because you can't put it all in the proposal letter. It needs to be something that uh, will, uh, you know, will flesh out what you can't put in the proposal letter. The proposal letter should only be a few minutes long. And then your call to action request to get book. How do you do that? And then thank you and your signature and contact. That's what's going to go into your proposal letter. And then keep it to no more than seven or eight paragraphs. Now let's talk about the speaker one sheet. This is a vital document. Um, and you're going to do this on day two. And if you have to edit up your video, you can do that on day two, too. Uh, your speaker one sheet should have a bio of you speaking to the problem that you solved, a couple of testimonials, great testimonials on you, and then um, the three presentations on the back all spelled out so that people have a choice. Now, let's mine your, let's talk about day three. This is where you get into the nitty gritty. This is where you start mining your existing connections for referrals. This is what people overlook all the time. They think about outside, but man, there are people and resources close to you that are going to start spinning off new speaking engagements for you. The first thing is ask friends, family, church, your social business memberships, all the people that you already know that are in your social circle. You'd be surprised and shocked to see how many people of them can connect you with potential speaking gigs. They all belong to stuff. Think in terms of asking them and don't be embarrassed to do that. Then call your local convention and visitors bureaus for conferences coming to town. Most people love to book people that are in the city so they don't have to fly them in and pay those expenses. So reach out to the CVB. Most of those are booking to anywhere up to six months to a year in advance and get the contacts and so reach out to them. Then post your request for speaking ops on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. You'd be shocked at how many people are going to respond to you. I know somebody. Here's somebody you can talk to. I belong to this group, et cetera. That's going to be a goldmine for you if you take advantage of it. Ask previous bookers to refer you to three people people that have already booked you. They loved you. They will be happy to refer you to three other people. So take advantage of the people already in your circle. Set up call for speaker alerts on Google and check up on Google, Twitter and LinkedIn for calls for speakers and you will start getting those as well. Then ask colleagues who are speakers for suggestions or referrals. Speakers know speak, speaking opportunities. And as long as you're not taking one out of their pocket that they've already done, then they'll be happy to refer you to people so that you can take all the future ones because, um, you know, so many of these events are evergreen and they reoccur and they're always looking for speakers. Those, uh, that's a great resource. And then ask your mastermind members or fellow people in your coaching programs. They all have different contacts that they can refer you because they're all looking to market themselves so they know those stages that are available to you. And then contact your local chamber of commerce for suggestions. Not only can you potentially get booked there, but they know everybody else in town. Ooh, this corporation takes speakers or this organization takes speakers. This civic group takes speakers. Um, this uh, uh, charitable organization does an annual, you know, they're going to be able to put you on to all kinds of stuff. So take advantage of all of those. Day four, what do you do? You start sending emails to all these fantastic people that you've been directed to. Uh, you've got now you've been building a list off of your day three work. You're now starting to send on day four. Get those emails out and start collecting. Um, the next thing is you want to focus locally. Now, your local market is really you know, a perfect opportunity to pick up the low hanging fruit because locals love to book locals. And if you're trying to grow a business where you can see fa people face to face, this is especially good. But remember, everything has gone virtual today. So you can take advantage of, you know, local, either virtually or, or um, online. So you uh, go to, you can go to Google and search by putting in what kind of a meeting you want and then your marketplace. So business networking, women's uh, business meetings, um, uh, you know, health and wellness support groups, whatever it wants to do, you want, you want to do, you can find it easily um, by matching it to your marketplace. Meetup is a great resource because you can actually get a register, have Meetup send you meetings that are starting up in your marketplace. Um, and you can also search it for meetings locally um, that are in your specialty area. Um, and so take advantage of Meetup. It's a great tool. And the next thing is Eventbrite. Most people think of Eventbrite as just single one-off events, but Eventbrite has really started carrying a lot of recurring events. So you can go in there and see what is looking for speakers every month that you might be on it and want to present yourself. So you want to select organizations to match your presentations list and then go out and what do you do? 
day six, you start sending those proposals. You've got all the the uh, the the, um, the experts. I mean, the uh, book, speaker bookers for all those organizations, and start sending out locally to get your local speaking gigs. Now let's expand to day seven. What do you do next? You want to go broader than that um, nationally or in your bigger, larger, extended region. So you want to find your niche. So get your niche, whatever that might be, and look for three national organizations in your niche that have chapters all across the country. Then go into those websites, mark, mark down the contacts for each of the chapters you want to speak at, and what do you do? What do you do? You start sending. So what are the kinds of organizations that you're going to reach out to? The Holistic Chamber of Commerce, Unity, Young Catholic Professionals, um, Black National Black MBA Association, Realtors, Conscious Capital. There are we at Speaker Trinity track 2,500 national organizations with chapters all across the country. This is really easy for you to find two, two or three that are perfect for you and start reaching out. And then you know what to do. Go reach out on day eight. This is when you really start pushing forward on day eight with all of those, those chapters all across the country. Now, if you don't think you're going to start seeing the yeses come back after this three concentrated days, I would be really surprised. However, some of them are going to take follow up. So day nine is systematically calling back those who have not responded by email or by phone. And in some cases, you may not even have a phone number, but you got to get on the phone to as many as possible and start reminding them that they have on their email a, a, an email from you about getting booked at their next event. Now, so what do you do on day 10? Well, some of those people may, may not have been easy to get a hold of. They didn't respond to either of those things. So the next thing is you follow up via direct messaging. So you can go to them on Facebook Messenger or on LinkedIn. Go to where they live because, you know, a lot of times people are answering their phones. They've got a cell phone and it's going to their office landline or, you know, or they just don't. They just screen their calls. This is a great way to get directly to people. So, hey, you want to, you know, here, what do you write to those people? What do you say in those follow-up emails? Well, here's one. Jane, hi, Jane, do you think the title of your presentation might intrigue your members or attendees at the next meeting or conference? I'd love to tell you more about how this presentation could impact your community. I've also sent an email on this. Might you spare a few minutes for us to speak by phone or Zoom? How best we connect? The next one, um, and that's really just, here's my, you know, check for it. Here's the second one is a little bit more, how can I be of service? I'm thrilled to connect with you here on LinkedIn or Facebook. I'm a big fan, supporter, member of whatever organization is, and I know how much work goes into serving an organization. I'd also like to see how I can be of service. How, here are some subjects I speak on, brief explanations. Would any of these be a benefit to you and your members? If not, what else is on their minds today? Can we chat? I'd love to be considered for a spot on your stage and would like to get, to get better acquainted so that you, uh, we can fill it, figure out how to fill your current need. Now, hey, if this is of value to you, how would you like to get all 10 of these? So here's a simple way to grab them. Go to speakertunity.com forward slash social follow-up. speakertunity.com forward slash social follow-up. This is an, a great gift for you to make it really easy for you to start getting out and doing those follow-up emails. So what do you do after your day, all, all 10 of these days? You celebrate your wins. There have got to be some of those that are coming back and that are saying yes to you at this point, which is really pretty exciting. Hey guys, thanks again for hanging with me. And I know that was a bit of a fire hose, but we're always looking to bring you a great value whenever we can. So thank you.